So I am on my third day with the OnePlus 7 Pro here, and I thought it'd be a great idea to compare it with my pretty much daily driver, the 10s Max. Although I have been using this more, this is still my phone with my main SIM in it. And yes, I see my main SIM because I now have two SIMs because Google offered me five for free for like a month for, you know, like promoting their Pixel 3a. So I got two separate numbers, two phones with service, and I keep both on me for the most part because in my life, there are things that iOS does that Android can't and vice versa. So because you know, being a tech reviewer is kind of like my job and I'm an enthusiast, I can do that. I can be like Marquez having like a pixel in one pocket and an iPhone in the other. But we're here today to help you decide which one of these phones is better for you because at the end of the day, most consumers only have one phone. I love both and I don't think there's going to be a clear winner, but there's going to be different aspects where each of these phones shines. So without further ado, let's get into this comparison. So here we are with the iPhone XS Max and the OnePlus 7 Pro here. This phone starts out at $1099 and this phone starts out at $669. I have the mid-tier 8GB version, which is priced at $700. So there's about a $400 price gap between these two devices. But I will say both are flagships in their own right and they are both fairly expensive. So I'm here today to compare and contrast these devices to kind of show you which phone does better in certain aspects. And I'm going to just kind of say, you know, which one I think is the better value for some people. I'm not going to be calling a clear winner if I already said that, but I am going to be highlighting what I think each phone does better. So first off, let's start with design here. Um, the iPhone goes with a very premium glass and stainless steel sandwich design. It feels heavy. It feels just awesome. It is definitely a $1,000 feeling phone. It's very, very solid. The OnePlus 7 is nothing to sneeze at either. It is a beautiful device with an awesome nebula blue sheen or colorway here. We have nice uh, chamfered or polished uh, metal here. I think it's just aluminum. And we have this beautiful curved glass on the front. I will say I love both designs for several different reasons. However, I'm gonna have to give this to iPhone. You are paying more money for the stainless steel here and this device just feels really solid in the hand. Both devices, however, feature uh, similar aspects as well. They both have a mute toggle switch, which is super useful for manually um, controlling your notifications or your sounds here. Um, by the way, I'm sorry if there's any mic noise. I have it actually on this desk right here. I'm working on getting a you know mountable mic in the air we're just kind of working with what we got here. But overall, I will say in terms of design, both are beautiful in their own different ways. I'm going to kind of elaborate more on design with display in a minute, but I do think that the iPhone is just a more premium feeling device. And it makes sense because you are paying an extra 400 ish dollars for it. I also like to lump in speaker quality here. iPhone wins again. It has a higher quality, louder, clear sounding sound. But with the OnePlus 7 Pro, they have integrated stereo speakers here, Dolby, whatever they want to call it. It sounds much, much better than the previous gen. So if you are a OnePlus user and you're thinking about upgrading, you'll be really excited with how this phone sounds. It's much louder, much fuller, and much clearer than, once again, previous generations. But obviously, this is going to go to iPhone again. It just sounds overall much better. Moving on to display here, here's where things get a little bit different. Um, obviously, if you're going to look at these two devices, the OnePlus 7 is going to look a lot better. And it is because it does not feature a notch here. And on top of not featuring a notch, while both these displays have a similar 2.5K resolution, I don't know each resolution off the top of my head, it's kind of weird. The OnePlus 7 Pro features a 90 hertz display, which is just something really, really special. Um, we're going to also go over that in terms of performance or in the performance aspect later on in this video. Both these displays are beautiful. They're great for content consumption, especially on YouTube. However, I will say I enjoy it more with the OnePlus 7 Pro because there is no notch and you can just zoom into videos and have no, you know, kind of obstruction in your way. Also, um, colors are a little bit more exaggerated with the OnePlus and I actually prefer that more than with my iPhone. I enjoy the kind of punchier, more contrasty look to the display with the OnePlus 7 Pro. But I will say iPhone's OLED display here is beautiful as well and it also features 3D touch, which is a special feature not found in other phones right now. So we got pressure sensitivity here and a notchless display here. I think OnePlus 7 Pro definitely wins this. This phone is just centered around this beautiful, massive display. But also, if you are concerned, iPhone XS Max is not far off from that. It has a very nice, very thin bezel design. However, we still have the notch here. Moving on to battery life here. Both these devices, I, I honestly can't give you an exact number because I haven't had this for long enough. And, you know, with this phone, it depends on my usage during the day. I estimate I can get around five to six hours with both of these phones with my heavy usage case. 
but there is a big difference here as well. You have wireless charging with the iPhone XS Max because it has a glass back and it enables that. And you have dash, or excuse me, warp charging with the OnePlus 7 Pro over USB Type-C. So um, I guess there are things that each phone does better in terms of battery life. Obviously, once again, you can wirelessly charge here with the iPhone and do some fast charging with their expensive um, brick that you have to buy, which I think is really, really dumb. But with this phone, you get warp charging, which like I said in my initial impressions video is just insanity. You can charge so quickly. I think I charged this phone uh, plus 15% in around five minutes. It's nuts. So my suggestion to you is that if you are someone who is always needing to charge or uses their phone and forgets to charge, this is your lifesaver. This phone is amazing. And honestly, I think I'd rather go with this over the iPhone. Although you can do some fast charging, this phone um, doesn't charge as fast as this one, but you do get wireless charging, which I do enjoy. I have a wireless charging pad next to my bed, so I can like roll over and just place it on there and I have to get up and plug it in. But if I had to choose one, I would go with this because the warp charging is just super, super convenient and I love the performance I get out of it. So at the end of the day, both phones are gonna perform similarly. They have similarly sized batteries. I think this one's gonna be bigger though. They both have power efficient chips. They both have OLED displays with similar resolutions. But again, you got quick charging here and you got wireless charging here pick whichever one you want. Maybe this is better suited for you. Maybe this is better suited for you. But again, I would go with this one because the warp charging is just super, super convenient. Next up, let's talk camera performance. And I'm just going to say it right away. iPhone XS Max definitely wins this category because Apple has put millions more into R&D with their exceptional camera setups. iPhone is usually killing it with photo and video and has been for the past couple of years now. OnePlus has different priorities with the 7. OnePlus tends to focus more on the performance aspects of their phone, whereas Apple kind of has a broader brush in terms of how they improve their iPhones, although incrementally, as we know. Generally, photos and videos are going to just look more contrasty with um, the iPhone, whereas with the OnePlus, things are going to be a little more overexposed, less sharp, a little bit more exaggerated. Long story short, the image processing with the iPhone is just way better than that of the OnePlus 6 here, although this will improve with software updates. One strength I will say that comes with the OnePlus 7 Pro is an ultra wide angle camera, which this phone lacks as of right now. It's really great to be able to get wide angled shots, especially in very uh, enclosed or claustrophobic places where you might not be able to capture everything in the frame. With this phone, you can do that. And that is a great feature, although it is restricted to photo and not video mode, which is kind of disappointing. And although iPhone XS Max really is king of video right now in terms of dynamic range and autofocus and whatever, OnePlus 7 Pro does hold its own and I've gotten several comments that uh, came from my photo and video comparison saying that the OnePlus 7 Pro does a decent job with video in terms of stabilization, sharpness, and color and I would agree. Um, it actually does better or performs better in video than in photo. So if you're more of a video person and you want the performance aspects of the OnePlus 7 Pro which we're going to talk about in a minute over the iPhones then this should be a great device for you. Just, just don't expect incredibly great things with the photo performance with the 7 Pro here. iPhone XS Max is going to be your go-to guy for great photos and videos consistently. And to wrap things up with camera here, we have a pretty advanced front-facing camera setup here with the iPhone XS Max and the notch. You have the Face ID tech, which allows, you know, better tracking and like Snapchat and stuff and like a really awesome looking portrait mode, although it's not as good as the Pixels. With the OnePlus 7 Pro here, although photos and videos are not going to be as great because once again, their processing is inferior, you have a really dope motorized camera setup. And I'm going to say it, the photos and videos you can take on here are more than adequate. You should have absolutely no problem. The front-facing camera is not the most important aspect of any smartphone, I would think, in this camera is more than good enough for the occasional selfie and you know video chatting over duo and whatever but this camera is motorized and while it accommodates that notchless display it also just looks really dope and it's kind of a party trick i really do enjoy this feature no other phones in the u.s really do this and people are going to kind of gawk at you when you use this you can explain like oh yeah this is a motorized camera i know that sounds really stupid you know it's kind of like you know why even have that like it's not like this insanely awesome feature I think it's pretty cool and you will definitely get some glances here. And I think it's a really brilliant design aspect as well, again, as it accommodates that notchless display on the front, which is a really big selling point of this phone. Last up, let's talk performance here with both these devices. Both phones pack really insane processors. The Snapdragon 855 actually outperforms the A12 in multi-core scores, whereas the A12 outperforms the A55 in single-core scores. But instead of translating to better, you know, daily tasks or whatever, or faster daily, you know, basic functions with the phone, 
OnePlus kills it here because their software is just geared towards making everything super blazing fast. I'm going to say that this phone is like a Hellcat. It's going to just 0 to 60 in like 3 seconds. It's super, super quick and everything, especially with the 90 hertz display, which makes everything look super buttery. With the iPhone Sinus Max, you have a really powerful processor, but it's more animation centric. It's more like a smooth ride on like a Mercedes or like a Rolls Royce or something. You have a powerful engine or a processor, but you're not trying to just accelerate or to open apps super, super quickly. Both are exceptional performers. This is no slouch by any means, but if you want raw performance, you're gonna wanna go with the OnePlus 7 Pro here. Everything is just super, super quick. There's absolutely no delay. And once again, the 90 Hertz display makes everything so fast fun to play around with the scrolling everything it's just phenomenal with the iphone 10s max once again it's going to be a smoother ride apple has a more refined gesture based navigation system with oneplus it's kind of more choppy but you do get that 90 hertz refresh rate though but with iphone things are just smoother in general there's not that there's lag here it's just a little more jarring it's a little more choppy with iphone everything is just super flowy and wonderful and you also can take advantage of the apple ecosystem with apple watch and iMessage and airdrop and everything like that whereas with oxygen os it's just your typical android phone however the experience is super stock and it also comes with a lot of great customizable features in terms of navigation accent colors um just overall customizations so that's kind of going into the ios versus android territory i'm not trying to do that and a quickly demo biometrics here with iPhone XS Max. Hell, I'm peeking in here. You get Face ID, which is fairly quick and very, very secure. With the OnePlus 7 Pro here, you get two options. You get uh, Face Unlock, which works pretty decently. Um, it's as fast as the camera pops out here, as you can see. Not as secure. You also get a more secure option, and my favorite option, which is the embedded uh, optical in display fingerprint sensor. It's super cool and it's another party trick of this phone. I personally prefer the biometric options with the OnePlus 7. As I said, the optical in display fingerprint sensor is super cool, but Face ID is very convenient as well and great for making payments and whatever, you know, with Apple Pay. And I guess I'll say both have really decent biometric technology. You can get in your phone pretty quickly. However, I do think that the OnePlus is more convenient with the fingerprint sensor and the option for face unlock as well. But to sum things up here, if you're looking for just the best device in terms of overall performance, you're going to want to get the OnePlus 7 Pro here. It once again has higher multi-core scores, and it just does things much, much quicker than the iPhone XS Max, which once again is more animation-centric. But again, this is going to kind of come down to your software preference. If you could care less about either, go with the OnePlus 7 Pro, but then also keep in mind the features that you might be giving up going from Android to iOS or iOS to Android. That's a whole separate video. I have made uh, content on that as well. If you want to watch that, I'll link an iOS versus Android video I made in the past down below. But yeah, overall best performer, OnePlus 7 for sure. But the iPhone XS Max is nothing to bat your eye at either. It's super smooth. This one is just insanely quick. And that up wraps things up here. I hope this video helped you out with your purchasing decision, whether you're thinking about picking up a XS Max or a OnePlus 7 Pro here. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and subscribe for more content like this, especially content on the OnePlus 7 Pro. I'm going to be covering it religiously for the next week or so. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.